Is it possible to turn this yellow sand land into a fertile soil? Crops like corn, tomatoes, sorghum, and sunflowers, transforming more than 200 hectares of sand dunes into an oasis, all within six months. Little, if any, rain and scorching temperatures. Not exactly ideal conditions to support vegetation. But turning that logic on its head is this desert in North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. According to our calculation, there are over 70 kinds of crops growing here. Many are not planted by us, but they just grow themselves. Crops like corn, tomatoes, sorghum, and sunflowers, transforming more than 200 hectares of sand dunes into an oasis, all within six months. It's all thanks to new technology developed by researchers at Chongqing Jiatong University. They developed a paste made of a substance found naturally in plant cell walls. When it's added to sand, it's able to retain water, nutrients, and air. The costs of artificial materials and machines for transforming sand into soil is lower compared with controlled environmental agriculture and reclamation. The research team has big future plans. This fall, it hopes to transform an additional 200 hectares of desert and possibly more than 13,000 in the next few years. The method could be promising for China. In three years, the country hopes to reforest 50 percent of degraded desert land that can be treated. By 2030, the United Nations is aiming to reach zero growth of desert farmland around the world. So China's breakthrough experiment in converting sand to soil is promising for making land seemingly hostile to life fertile ground. Jory lives near the desert. He has a new job working in a solar power station. For thousand years, there's nothing here but sand in the middle of the Kubuchi desert. And now, this is one of the largest solar power stations in northwest China, and it only took two years to build this oasis here. The solar power station generates 500 million kilowatt hours every year. It also generates income for local people. We've hired local people for construction and maintenance work. They also become shareholders by leasing land to us. I used to earn two to three thousand yuan a year. Now I get paid forty thousand yuan a year. It's a big difference. This is an example of the desert economy in Kubuchi. It's part of the efforts of a private company called E-Line to roll back desertification. The core of it is to balance the relationship between government, enterprises, farmers, and ecological environment. Raising the income of local people is vital to the success, and the environment is also benefiting. The sandstorms are much fewer, and the movement of the sand dunes has also slowed. Various ways are being developed to improve efficiency and reduce cost, like reserving 40 days of water for a tree and planting licorice that sells for around 10 yuan per kilogram in the market. The ecological management in the desert must be economical and respect nature and market rules. 
The desert economy model in Kubuti has turned 6,000 square kilometers of desert green, created 500 billion yuan in value, and helped 100,000 farmers out of poverty. We believe this is a model that can be replicated, that can have multiplier effect, and it can be replicated everywhere in the world where we have the right kind of building blocks. What I hear. Desertification affects over a fifth of China's territory and a third of its people. After years of efforts in legislation, policy, finance, mechanism, and technology innovation, China has become one of the few countries in the world that has reduced the areas under threat. Is it possible to turn this yellow sand land into a fertile soil? We plant a family of flowering plants having pulses fruits. And root modules that can extract nitrogen from the air, so the sandland can gradually become fertile soil. Dong has been working for Kubuchi Desert Technology Institution since she graduated from Beijing Forestry University. The research center is founded by Alien Resources, a private enterprise specializing in sustainable land management. They discovered growing licorice used in Chinese herb medicine in difficult terrain is not only good for business. But also for the environment. Licorice grows rhizobia, so it has nitrogen fixation. After the land has been planted with licorice, it can quickly change to soil, and is then fertile for agriculture. Apart from growing the rice species, uninterrupted sunlight provides much potential for capturing large quantities of solar energy. Exploiting this resource would help China meet both its energy requirements and its commitments to saving the environment. We make a flat-out effort to develop the industry of forestry in the desert. Desert industry serves both commercial and environmental needs. As a result of improvements in the environment, natural lakes peppered round. Encourage locals to return and new migrants to arrive. Today, hundreds of different breeds of birds have settled here. Local herdsmen call them beautiful angels and try hard to protect them, so their numbers are likely to rise in coming years. Not only the numbers of birds will continue to increase, but also the region's attractions for investors. China is boosting its efforts at preventing the spread of desert lands. Working with private companies, the work in Kubuti Desert has become a flagship project of these efforts. During the past five years, China has restored over 10 million hectares of land affected by desertification. The desert area used to increase by 10,000 square kilometers every year. Now it shrinks by 2,400 square kilometers annually. Since 2016, China has used public-private partnerships in the fight against the desertification, with companies investing tourism and agricultural projects, and farmers getting subsidies. Decades ago, this was a desolate desert. Now it's a garden, a tourism attraction in the middle of the desert. Not only it turns the land green, but it also generates income for local people, so that such projects could be sustainable and expanded to more areas. China is also working with the United Nations, and efforts to control desertification has extended across the nation's border. I think in United Nations, we believe this is a model that can be replicated, that can have multiplier effect, and it can be replicated everywhere in the world where we have the right kind of building blocks. What I hear. Yet it is too early to declare victory. China has one of the world's largest desert areas. One fourth of the nation's territory is affected by desertification. Ninety-five percent of that is along the Belt and Road Economic Zone that the country strives to revive. It requires great efforts to turn desert into green land. Yet it will require more to keep it this way. At the beginning, people may think that in such a desert-like environment, 或者是进行农业的操作呢，是一个商业机会。但实际上，随着这个时间的推移，当看到这个呃更多的这个沙漠，让我们在我们这个农下变成绿洲、变成良田以后，使命感就开始出来了。能够把沙漠变为耕地，那这件事情本身的意义和价值，就一定会在未来凸显出来。到目前为止，我们十五项专利。思想方面，因为
，我们会从企业的这个维度来去考虑，如何来种地，啊，如何来解决农业的问题。嗯，一三一四一五的话，我们对应的发展速度是五十亩、五百亩、五千亩。当五百亩的这个呃一片良田产生，然后绿油油的，这个老百姓开始相信。当到五千亩的时候，老百姓可能开始追随。其实往往是这样的，就是我们不能去在创业的初期就判断准确我们未来的方向，但只要你坚持，坚持的做下去，你会找到。